ask you. Is there a plan in fact? Right, but it's general mission. There's no. Nothing. Okay, that's good. The only thing we'll ask is that people from your first game move to the top. Absolutely. Appalachian Wireless Arena, 23-24, 15th Regional Super Region <laughs> Tournament. Uh, at this time, I'm going to have Mr. Noel Crumb speak about why we did all this and try to clear up any, any questions that you may have. And if there's any questions at this time that you'd like to ask, now is the time to do it, okay? Um, once he gets finished, we'll have the other people come up that need to talk before I go through the other information for the tournament. And then the last thing we will do, uh, we'll do the draw for the girls and then the draw for the boys. M Mr. Noel Crum. Morning, everybody. Um, so... Um I just want to go back a little bit in time, and, and this is a process that actually started over a decade ago, and there was discussion and, and a lot of movement towards trying to move to a super region um, that the KSA had had inquired about because we've had a situation in the 15th region for quite a while where we've had three team districts. and. Um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I guess, uh, at the um, regional KHSA meeting, uh, Commissioner Tackett was there and had, and at that time we knew Jenkins was leaving to go back to the 14th region and had invited uh, the region to try to come up with a solution to provide some equity between the three team and the four team districts. And this is a problem that he sees is going to happen throughout the state. The first region's already in that situation as well. And so um, taking some of the stuff that had been worked on a decade ago um, by the, the people that was involved, there was a committee back then that worked on that. Uh, we started from there and tried to work out solutions and took a lot of input from different people and um, uh, met with a lot of different groups. Um, and there was, like I said, a lot of input. And I don't know if Cassandra Akers is in here or not, but I know she, she definitely helped a lot there at the end with suggestions and things, trying to figure out how you could do this. Because the one thing that the KHSA said that they really, and and I think it's very clear, because I've heard a lot of people say, well, why are we playing district tournaments? We should just seed and go straight into a region. I believe that, um, and even when I went down there after after this was passed through our policy board to present that, that was the first question asked. I, I think that there is a 100% dedication from the KHSA to maintain the integrity of the district tournaments. And one of the reasons I think they're excited about this proposal and, the, and what we're doing this year in the 15th region is that the district tournaments now are even more important than they've ever been. And so I think that is, is lent as, as a created a lot of excitement you know within the district tournaments and I think you can look at some of the games to see that, at how much excitement that created so that was the that was the first big thing hurdle in trying to create this the bracketing is how do you maintain because that was the other thing too there was a lot of times before proposals were saying well everybody would have to end the season a week early you know if we're going to start in and do those games so trying to maintain where every team can still play their 30 games that you can still have district tournaments that that occur the exact same way the seedings for the district tournaments were exactly the same the district tournaments were played the exact same way so that was the first step in that process making sure that we tried to maintain that integrity of the way that works um, the, the you know the next thing was trying to, to trying to maintain a situation where your regional tournament the the the, the quarterfinals are on the final eight the, the games played here at Appalachian Wireless Arena would that would still be conducted and held in 
as close a fashion as that's always been done, and the same as what's in other regions. And what you're going to see here in a little while is, I think there's been a lot of confusion thinking that this draw is going to be different than draws in the past. This draw that we're getting ready to conduct will be like every draw that any of you have ever attended, ever. We will still draw in the exact same order, the exact same fashion. The ones will draw and go into one, three, five, and seven. The the runners up will go on the opposite sides in two, four, six, and eight. That the draw, that whole part of the bracket will be identical to every draw that we've ever had. Okay, so the the only difference here was trying to create a situation because what you know the and one of the problems and one of the things that I think that they want to try to resolve is you know when you have situations where there are three team districts and I've heard a lot of people say well are we allowing teams to lose to work their way in well with this proposal you know probably the best thing about this is every single team in the region to get to play here in Appalachian Wireless Arena every single team in this region will have to win a game to have the opportunity to play in this arena. We had a situation before where in the three-team district, if you're the one seed, you can lose your way into the regional tournament. It's happened before, uh, you know, in, in this region, that a team could be the number one seed because you don't have an opponent in the first game. Then you play the winner of the 2-3 game. If you lose, you've lost your only game, and yet you're in the round of eight. By, by this proposal here, you create equity between three and 14 districts, and in a, in a given year, if one district is stronger than, than another district, you're giving every team the exact same opportunity to advance and move forward. So that was the catalyst to try to design this, and then the last part of that was to try through that process to also not have district opponents have to keep playing each other uh, multiple times. And and as you know, with our current regional setup, your winner and runner-up are always on opposite sides. So that was the, one of the main tenets with this, is that as long as the higher seeds had won out, your twos and threes, your district runner-up, and the three seed from a district, which in two of our districts, there, there are only three teams. In the other two districts, you had a three and a four seed. But this, the way the proposal set up, the, the three seeds would always be also opposite of the one. So all preference still goes to the district champion. District champion still goes into this exactly as they've always gone before, already advancing into Appalachian Wireless Arena, and then they will know they will not see their two or three seed until the championship game. The two and three seed would also be placed away from each other on that opposite side of the bracket. So that, that simple rule was followed in trying to apply. Now. As has happened this year, uh, we, we've had in both the girls and boys, we've got a situation where some four seeds have advanced. So bear in mind that in doing this, and I can answer any questions if anyone has, has one here in a moment, uh, if a four seed advances, if only one four seed advances, then they're going, there's only going to be one open spot in the bracket. You're going to place those three seeds in exactly where they should go. They will always be opposite of the one, away from the two. Then, if there's a four seed remaining, they will have to go in the only available spot on the bracket. Now, if by chance two four seeds go, you will still be able then to maintain not having to play a district opponent because you would then be able to just simply cross those you know, districts over. So that, and that also has happened this year. So in boys, we actually have two four seeds that have advanced uh, in. Uh, in girls, you have one four seed that has advanced um, in. So, so that, those are the, the, the caveats too. Like I said, if all, the, if all the high seeds go through, it's just a simple, very simple bracket where you're one your twos and threes are on the opposite sides. And it's honestly, if that happens, it's not very complex at all. It's just there it is, and you go right on into the tournament. The good thing is this draw is going to be just like it always has been. So those were the main things. Like I said, I think that this is something that uh, there's been a lot of feedback. I know the 16th region is already looking at that. They feel like consolidations are going to be obviously a thing of more of the future. I don't think in rural areas we're going to see more high schools built. You know, we're going to see more consolidations. You know, but obviously, in if you go look at the what Louisville, one of those regions has 19 schools. You know, they're popping up new schools in 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 urban areas. Fourth region has, you know, with Bowling Green growing. So you know, we're, we're going to see a continual growth in urban areas. You know, population drop in in rural areas, unfortunately. But, but anyway, I do think that this uh, fit all the the, the check boxes that the KHSA wanted to see, and maintained the excitement of the district tournament. So, I will field any questions before we move forward. If anyone has got any questions about how um, 
the bracketing would work or how anything would would go. For clarification, uh, I don't think the policy board had a two-thirds majority vote. It went to the commissioner, and the commissioner is the one that pushed for the, the super region. He's the one that approved it. Yeah, this was yeah. That's a good point, Greg. This was approved. This wasn't. This was approved by the Cache State Board of Control in Lexington. Yeah, and I think it was unanimously approved, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, by the the Board of Control. And this was something that was inspired. The Cache SA d does see this as an issue growing across the state, and so yes, this was this was uh, approved by the Cache State Board of Control. It was approved by a majority, a nine six vote within this region, but it was unanimous at the at the. HSA Board of Control um, to to put this into place and uh, yes. Do you think we talked about the region? Do you think that uh, in the future that we will change officials? In the start of the district I mean, that's a whole different question. That's been brought up before. I mean, obviously, I think that everyone sees officials an awful lot. And for the officials, I mean, I think a lot of people and coaches would probably say it's probably a good thing if you could do that. I don't know. It would require those regions, those two, you know, whichever region you switch. I mean, that's a whole nother ball of wax. But I, I think that would require those two region assigning secretaries and everything working to try to assign those from the district level forward. I think that it probably have to be consistent across the state, though. I, I don't know that they would just let... Two, two regions do that, uh, that would probably be something that the whole state would need to look at uh, going in. And I don't think that's just a basketball thing. I've heard that in other sports that it would be good for both officials and the teams to, to just see fresh faces, but I, I don't know. I can't really answer that. It's not the take nothing away from our officials, but I just think it would be better in the district tournament for our coaches to be able to get used to that's true. That's true. Well, and I don't think it's ever a good situation when every fan knows the first name of every official and is yelling at them. I mean, you know, from both sides, I I, I fully see it. That, that's a tough situation for both sides. So, yeah, I, I get it. But I, I don't think that's a decision we would ever make within our region. That would be a board of control. That'd be a catch and say board of control um, decision. Don't you agree? I mean, that's not that, that won't be from, from us. Any other questions about draw bracket, the way this thing will work? today. All right, guys. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mr. Crum. At this time, I'd like for Josh Kessler, who is the assistant GM and the marketing director for Appalachian Wireless Arena, to come up and speak on, on the behalf of the arena. I thought he was already on. Can you all hear me? All right, good morning. Just want to, uh, on behalf of our general manager, Larry Miller, and myself, want to welcome everyone back to the 15th Region Tournament. Looking forward to having a uh, great turnout and uh, just doing what we do best, trying to provide uh, folks some uh, some basketball action. So appreciate it. If you all have any questions, feel free to reach out to Larry or myself, and let's just have a uh, awesome 15th Region this year, okay? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Josh. Uh, this year we are having uh, co-title sponsors, um, Community Trust Bank and, App and Appalachian Regional Hospital will be the, the co-title sponsors. Um, the person from Appalachian Regional Hospital couldn't be here today, but uh, from Community Trust Bank will be Mr. David Akers. It's a long walk from the back. Uh, Mr. King couldn't be here this morning, so I'm stepping in for him. Just want to thank everybody uh, for coming out. Uh, Community Trust is honored to sponsor this with ARH, and um, we hope for a good, clean, healthy tournament from all the players, coaches, hope fans behave, and those types of things. But uh, just uh, thank you all for coming out this morning. We're honored to be a community sponsor. Thanks.
Thank you, Mr. Akers, and we uh, greatly appreciate community trust involvement in this tournament over the past year since it was started here. Uh, Mr. Bennett West, the official scorer, would like to say a few things before we get started. Could I just go in front of Yes, sir. I don't know whether they can hear me or not, but by way of uh, telling you how things have changed in this district and region, when I was in high school and I graduated from Belfry in 1967, we were in a 10-team district. <laughs> and of course, several of those schools now are not around. Uh, so things have really changed. Again, it's an honor to do this. I think this will be my 16th out of 19 tournaments that's been held here that I've been the official scorer. And um, people keep asking me how much longer I'm going to do it. Well, it's up to me and the good Lord now. I'm hoping to get four more years at least and that'll make me 50. As always, remember that on your scorebooks you can only put no more than 15 on the uh, book. I had a case this year where there was one, a team had 17. I had to put two on bottom lines, two lines with two players on it, and the first substitutes made, each one of those lines were used. And that gets it kind of confusing when you have to do that. And also, please give me first names and last names. I had one, in fact, this year that they gave me the names as John, Jim, Joe, and Billy. <laughs> Didn't even put last names. So, uh, and as quickly as you can get that to us, that will help not only me get my book filled out, it'll help PD at the clock. And who's going to do the stats this year, Kevin? Nobody. Nobody, no stats. No stats this year. So you'll have to keep your own. Um, one thing about it, I've trained somebody at Belfry, so that is well taken care of. But uh, the rest of you, you will need to do your stats the way you normally do. I look forward to a good, great tournament, and I'm turning it back over to Kevin. Thank you, Mr. West. And uh, as always, it's greatly appreciated for all the help that we get. Uh, the, the 2024 15th Regional Boys and Girls Basketball Tournament uh, presented by Community Trust Bank and Appalachian Regional Hospital will be played here at the Appalachian Wireless Arena. The dates will be March the 4th through March the 11th. This year's tournament is hosted by the 59th District Schools. Uh, I will be the tournament manager. The 15th Region Policy Board, made up of principals athletic, and athletic directors, is responsible for the adoption of the Appalachian Wireless Arena as the venue for the tournament. This facility offers our region the seating capacity not available to any of our high schools and is a prelude to what our teams will experience in Rep Arena. Revenue sharing. Each 15th region school will share equally in the tournament revenue after expenses are deducted, providing they sponsor a Kentucky High School Athletic Association boys and girls sport in the fall, winter, and spring. Participating schools shall receive $1 per mile round trip bus expense per game. Each school will receive $100 per night for food per game. Both the boys and girls regional winning teams will receive $1,000 through the sponsorship money raised. And also Appalachian Wireless will be presenting the boys and girls winners a check for $1,000 as well. Um, so that's $2,000 that each one will get to help sharing your expenses going forward through the state tournament. All right, first thing, roll call. I'll do the girls first, 57th district winner. Uh, Johnson Central. And your record? 27 and two. 27 and two, Johnson Central. 57th district runner up? Martin County. Martin County, record? 
2011. 58th district winner. Prestonburg High School, 16 and 13. Prestonsburg, 16 and 13. 58th district runner-up. Floyd Central, 11 and 18. Floyd Central, 11 and 18. 59th district winner. Pikeville. Pikeville. Uh, 24 and 5. 24 and 5, 59th district runner up. Uh, Shelby Valley, 19 and 11. Shelby Valley, 19 and 11. 60th district winner. Pike Central, 17 and 13. Pike Central, 17 and 13. 60th district runner up. Belfry, 15 and 14. Belfry, 15 and 14. Boys, 57th district winner. Martin County. Martin County. 21 and 9. 21 and 9. 57th district runner up. McGoffin County, 17 13. McGoffin County, 17 and 13. 58th district winner. Floyd Central. Floyd Central. 16 and 13. 16 and 13. 58th district runner up. Lawrence County. Lawrence County. 23 and 7. 23 and 7. 59th district winner. Pikeville. Pikeville. 21 and 4. 21 and 4. 59th district runner up. Shelby Valley. Shelby Valley. 8 and 17. 8 and 17. 60th district winner. Pike Central. Pike Central. 20 and 8. 20 and 8. 60th district runner up. Belfry. Belfry. 10 and 21. 10 and 21. All right, the dates and the times for the girls will begin Monday, March the 4th at 6.30 and approximately 7.45. It may be later, but these are approximate times. The first game time will start at 6.30. On Tuesday, March the 5th, 6.30 and 7.45. On Wednesday will be the first boys game, March the 6th at 6.30 and 7.45. On Thursday will be the boys quarterfinal, March 7th, 6.30 and 7.45. Friday, March the 8th, the girls' semifinals, March the 8th, 6.30 and 7.45. On Saturday, March the 9th at 4.30 will be the girls' finals. Also on Saturday, March the 9th at 7 o'clock will be the boys' first semifinal game. The second game will begin at approximately 8.45. On Monday, March the 11th, the boys' finals will be at 7 o'clock. Officiating crews have been set for the tournament and are assigned out of the 14th region. The public address will be Vernon White, the official scorer Bennett West, the clock operator P.D. Hunt. Security, Appalachian Wireless Arena. The facility is under constant video surveillance and all inappropriate acts will result in action by proper authorities. Also, the Pikeville City Police Department and the Pikeville Fire Department will provide EMTs throughout the course of the tournament. Parking is first come, first serve. You have the parking garage, the Riverfield area right back here, and downtown. There is no VIP parking. Buses will park back here in the loading dock area the night you play. Emergency personnel, Appalachian Wireless Arena and Pikeville Fire Department, janitorial services, Appalachian Wireless Arena, and there is no unauthorized live video streaming. Will be allowed from Appalachian Wireless Arena during the 15th Region Boys and Girls Basketball Tournaments. Live streaming will be available through approved providers as determined by myself. And we already have three people that have come forward to do live streaming. The official game ball will be a Spalding, as stipulated by the KHSA. Basketballs will not be provided by warm-ups. Make sure you bring your own to warm up with. All coaches got that? Bring your own basketballs for warm-ups. <coughs> Admission tickets. Tickets may be purchased from schools through Ticketmaster at the Appalachian Wireless Arena Ticket Office. All tickets sold will be general admission. 
$10 for adults, $5 for students. All seats are chair backs. Teams identified by their coach will be admitted through the group pass gate at the loading dock, which is back here where you come in. Assistant coaches will also be identified by the head coach. The home side will be across from the benches, which is that side of the arena, okay? That will be the home side. Top team in the bracket will be the home team. And we'll wear, we'll wear white, we'll wear white uniforms for the home team. The visitors will be behind the benches. The home student section will be across from the home bench. The student section will be behind the visitors bench and it will be roped off. Cheerleaders and dance teams in uniform identified with their, by their sponsor will be admitted through the group pass gate on the night their team participates, which is down here again at the loading dock area. Bands will be admitted through the group pass gate during the sessions their teams play and will sit in the designated areas. They will have the bleachers back on the home end and we'll have chairs set up for the bands to be able to play there. And on this end, there will be chairs set up for the band to be here. Media may pick up a tournament pass from Josh here at the arena. You just need to make contact with him in order to get your media credentials. All other spectators or visitors must have a ticket. Uh, when this is over with today, if one representative from each school will see me, I have your passes for your boards of education. Each pass is good for the entire tournament, so whenever they have it, when they come in the door and have it scanned, they need to put it back in their pocket. It will be good for the entire tournament. Gate hours. Ticket office opens at 10 a.m. The doors will open at 5.30, one hour each day before game time. On Saturday, gates will open at 3.30. Passes. Players participating in the tournament may enter the pass gate at the loading dock during any session. All college and university coaches displaying proper identification will be admitted. And if you have a college coach that has contacted you wanting to see the game, if you'll let me know. Uh, either by text, call me. My cell phone number is 606-422-6565. I can make arrangements to have them seated away from other people. High school coaching cards and KHSA officiating cards are not accepted. The band playing time, national anthem. The home team will be responsible to play the national anthem each evening and during the finals. The national anthem will be need to be played at the six minute mark prior to the start of the game. Bands must sit in the designated areas of their team side of the gym. Cheerleaders will be permitted to lead the team out on the floor for pregame warm up with flags. After that, they are to follow in game rules set forth by the KHSA pertaining to doing cheers on the floor. They are permitted to do cheers during full timeouts only. Dance team should contact me to set up a time to perform at halftime. Hi, yes. On the national anthem, we have a group of like, can, can it doesn't have to be the band or could it be No, anybody it could, it could be your choir, but the home team will be responsible to do it. If you have a choir, uh, only thing I will need to know are the names so we can allow them to come through the gate. Okay. All right, warm-up time. Each team will be allowed 20 minutes to warm up prior to the game. Now, if you are the first team that plays, you can come out on the floor, you can stretch, you can dribble, but you cannot do anything else. That gives equal each team the same opportunity on the floor. When the second game starts and the floor is cleared and the clock is ready, if both teams are waiting, he'll blow the horn when you can get on the floor. Teams will begin pregame warm-ups on the end opposite their bench. The top team in each bracket will be the home team and will wear white uniforms. And I'm not going to stress that more than enough. White uniforms for the home team. Halftime will be 15 minutes. I'm trying to give away some money this year. I got a sponsor. Uh, 
that wants to give away some cash. So we'll keep the 15 minutes, gives you opportunity to get off the floor, gives you opportunity to talk to your team, let dance teams perform, and let me try to give away some money to some people that are coming to the game. Also, we will have one, we will have live streaming going on. And since it is live TV, we will have media timeouts each quarter under four minutes, not on a free throw. If it's on a free throw, it will be at the next dead ball. So you will have four extra timeouts, and they will be two minutes in length each quarter. Playing area. No more than 15 players are permitted in uniform by, for any one game. I will, I will have signs on the doors for uh, your locker room where to dress. The home teams will be in three and four. The visitors will be in locker rooms one and two. The home team can go out through the tunnel and come out on their end of the bench. The visitors can come out through this area here out to the floor. And when you leave after the game, you can go back the same way. That way you're not crossing each other. Coaches are to supervise dressing rooms after each game. And we had an incident where a whiteboard was broken during the All-A. The school had to pay for it. Um, they do a great job of going in and inspecting your locker room before and after the game. And since there's only four teams here, we know who was in that locker room. Excuse me. I've already discussed about the media. Weather. If inclement weather becomes a factor, I will notify all participating schools and media the decision concerning cancellation of the games at least four hours before that first game. If unforeseen situations arise that pose an imminent, unexpected danger to public safety, games may be canceled with little or no notice. Hopefully we have great weather this coming week. Bus parking. All buses will be parked per instructions of the parking attendant at the loading dock area. Team cheerleading and band buses will be parked in the loading dock area where the team and bus driver will enter through the pass gate. Pep buses will unload in front of the Appalachian Wireless Arena, which is right across from Big Sandy. And then they will either be able to park back here in the loading dock area or down the river field. We will not provide a hospitality room for anyone. Just want to make that clear. No hospitality room. Yes. Is it said, why wouldn't they move the boys' semifinals up earlier on Saturday and play the girls' finals later? Because that doesn't give a lot of turnaround time if you play that last game on Friday night for a girls' game. I agree. There's no well, when I discussed it at the policy board that day, everybody was in agreement to play the game at 4.30. I asked that day when we were setting times and everybody at the policy board meeting that day had accepted those times. I was talking to Coach Felter and she made a good point a couple years ago. What time did you get on, Coach? Yeah. And then had turned on the play. That's... That's pretty tough on that on that on that team, but boys play on Thursday, girls play Friday. That seemed like that'd be the smart thing to do. Well, fan wise what we're trying to do is get more people in for your all's games. Something that can be something that set stone. Well, the policy board approved the times that day. If I'm not mistaken, correct, Mr. Mr. Napier. I'm sorry. On the times that day when I went over for game times, the policy board accepted all the game times. I see your point. I mean, honestly, I mean, both ways as far as getting that. Uh, that's that's going to be a, I didn't have 24 hours if you right. play that last game. If you play the late, late game and having to play. You're going to win a state championship. You're going to win that morning and win that night. Mm -hmm. What would you say? 
You, you're going to play two games on Saturday if you if you play go to state tournament, and if you play the late game, you don't get a whole lot of turnaround time. You get. Here's my my argument on that would be all the one seeds have a decisive advantage because they're getting a whole week to rest and do all that. So that would be the only thing I would say. That's looking at roughly a week prep time. But you know, Elijah and, I, and we can both talk about the fact that that's pretty tough turnaround on a Saturday morning in Lexington, but it is something you got to do. Uh, that, that's a good point to be made. Between now and next year, I don't think we can change it this year because that was a vote that we require. That we require the new administration will be taken over to, to, take to make that call. That's it. But for this year, it, it's set. Right, that's, that was the vote. I don't know how we would change it. All right, property damage. All schools were sharing the cost of repairing damages due to spectator vandalism. Damages caused by fans of students of a particular school will be assessed to that school, provided there is sufficient evidence to determine the guilty parties. And the arena is under complete video surveillance. Prohibited items. The following items and activities are banned due to problems they have created at past tournaments. Unappropriate signs of any kind. Throwing objects onto the plane floor, no confetti, no tunnels, no silly string, and no artificial noise makers, which is megaphones for cheerleaders. They cannot have them either. The filing items are not permitted in the arena per the Appalachian Wireless Arena rules, weapons of any type, animals except for service animals, umbrellas, strollers, backpacks, large bags, outside food or drink, cans or bottles, tobacco products except in the designated areas. Tournament awards. The following will be given. Winner and runner-up trophies to the boys and girls. Winner and runner-up awards for team members, 25 per team. Winner and runner-up coaches awards for boys and girls. Nobody wants that. Does anybody want a runner-up coaches award? Well, it's, it's, it was voted on and it's been in. Now, you can take it and throw it away, but it's already bought. I'm just saying like money was. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's already bought okay. right. and ordered. Next year, don't speak All tournament team with 15 members plus an MVP. One member of the quarterfinalist will be voted upon conclusion of sessions one through four. Two members of the semifinalist. Three members for finalist. Four members for the champion. And the MVP will come off the winning team. We will have water coolers and cups on your benches. And if you play the first game, would you please clean up your bench area? Have someone clean up the cups. And if you spill water, have the water cleaned up before you leave after the game to make sure that when the team comes back out on the floor for the second game, that the area is just how you found it for your game. I'd like to say this. I compliment everybody up there because that's not been an issue at any of our games this year. Everybody's taking care of their at least their own place, so I don't think that'd be an issue. All right. Now I guess is the main thing we're here for. Mr. Crum, would you like to write in on the board? Yeah, that'll let you bring it in. Is there a shot? Yeah, there's dry erase down there. The order of the draw will be the 59th is the host, so the 60th will draw first, then the 57th, the 58th, and then the 59th gets what's left. All right, 60th district girls will be Pike Central. Pike Central draws ball five. Yeah, I... 
Somebody took my other paper. Seven. Johnson Central, seven. Prestonsburg, one. Pikeville, that leaves you three. The 60th district and the and the 57th will draw for two and four. Fifty eighth would draw. We're six and eight. Six. Six. Four cents for six. And that leaves Shelby Valley at eight. No. Three seed there, so you move to the 57th district. Uh, uh, three seeds Paintsville, so Paintsville will be the first team placed. So you look to see where your number one seed is, which is Johnson Central. Then you go up and see where Martin County is, so Paintsville draws automatically into the game against Belfry. And that slot right there. All right, so next. You go to the 58th district, uh, three seed there is three? Lawrence. So Lawrence has to be um, opposite Preston's Bird and away from Floyd Central. So they will be playing Shelby Valley. Okay, so now you move to 59th District, East Ridge of the Bay. So East Ridge has to be opposite of Pikeville. And they, so then they fall in here at this game here against Floyd Center.
And then that leaves the only remaining team in the bracket, which is Betsy Lane. And so that means Betsy Lane will be playing Mark. Those, so these, these games, four games, so this game we play the Belfry, the, the Paxton Belfry game, the Best Lane Martin County games of Martin County, the East Ridge Floyd Central games of Floyd Central, and the Lawrence County Shelby Valley game is at Shelby Valley. All right, now game times for those games. Okay. So I wait to see what the boys draw. I know it. Yeah. We will set those game times once we have the boys draw. Okay. I knew that was going to be the next question. So all the, and all these games will be Saturday, but we will set these girls' times and then the boys' times. All right. Sixtieth district. Pike Central 60th will draw for two or four. Seven drawn for six or eight. Six. McGoffin County six. Shelby Valley eight. So Johnson Central will be the first place in the bracket. So they have to be uh, opposite of Martin away from golf. So you will have a Johnson Central Shelby Valley matchup. Okay, now you move to the 58th district and your three seat there is Betsy Lane. And so Floyd Central with your district champion Betsy Lane has to be in this bracket and away from Lawrence. So it's Belfry and Betsy Lane. Okay. 
Okay, now you got two four seeded teams left, and so you want to avoid the district matchup. So that means you are going to have a Lawrence County Paintsville matchup and a McGoffin County Prestonsburg matchup. There's your back. Well, if, if four teams, that's what I said at the beginning, the, the way that it works out is that your, your one, twos, and threes are automatic go in. Your two, you, if you're a one seed, you can never see your two or three until the championship game. But if your district's fortunate enough to get all four in, then that, that four is going to have to go somewhere, and depending on how the bracket draw goes, it could be a, a if you, but you're going to be in that flash arena, it won't be a first round matchup, but in the, in the arena, you could play your one. The four and one could feasibly get bracketed together depending on the draw. There's just no way to avoid it, you know, if you get all four teams uh, in. So. All right, now we need to set game times. Go to the girls. First, who is the first matchup? Do, here's the thing. Do we have? We I know we have six sites. Well, I think the thing we got to look at here. There's a couple things. One, we need to make sure because there's several of these schools have got two. Well, have got two um, teams playing that same day, and I know that. So we're going to have to look first to, to see to make sure that. All those line up. As you said, as far as referees, that's not an issue, Greg. I talked to him this morning. He has 24 officials ready to go. Okay. So this is just purely going to be between teams and coaches and making sure we align so people can get to where they need to. Because let me ask you a question. Is Shelby Valley the only one that's actually a double post? Yeah. And, and it's just Betsy Lane. No, Belfry. Betsy Lane and Paintsville are the only schools that have to. Have well, Belfry's a double post. That's correct. So in, in those. No, no, we're going two Belfry and then two Lawrence County, so this will be. So yeah, you, you okay? So you you will have to have these staggered. That's so right. You will be able. To, that was the point being that if, if a team has got to go on the road to two different places, we have to make sure we follow that two thirty and seven thirty time slot. So if, if Paintsville being involved, the girl whatever the girls game Paintsville is, got to start at two thirty and then seven thirty for the boys game they're in. So I think that so this Belfry Paintsville game girls has to be a two thirty. Start out of fairness for administration and athletic directors to get between two sides, especially that that's good distance. So. Bands, your cheers, bands. Administrators, right? So, so I, so that's a definite right here. Belfry, Pikeville, or Paintsville at two thirty. So then, let's no, write those times in, please. So we're looking at two thirty. These games will be March the second. <laughs> Tomorrow, right? Yes. So, so the Martin Betsy Lane game has got to be a two thirty start. Girls, right? Okay. Girls. And um, Lawrence also has two games that day, correct? So I think that. So really, all I think all girls games have got to be two thirty starts. In looking at this, just out of fairness, because you've got too many teams are having to travel. Is that right? Yeah, we can't do two thirty. Oh, you can't? Okay, what time can you do? Four. I can't get workers for two games with a big delay in between. Just to be quite honest, it's almost impossible. So, right. four o'clock is your earliest start time? Yeah. Then, then I'm going to have to we'll have to recommend then that that boys game be an eight o'clock start that night. We'll play yes. it. Is it possible for us to start? <laughs> We're running to make still. I was trying to actually look back and say, yeah, we're back. Back. Lawrence County is just the one. Well, look, here's the thing, guys. This is a Saturday. So if we have to do 4 and 8.30. But I'm playing Johnson Central and Lawrence, and there, there's only one. Y'all only play one game on Saturday. Right. right. In your case, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, 4, four o'clock is fine for you yeah. because these two teams, yeah, as far as Shelby Valley is concerned, I was thinking about Paintsville, and, but that doesn't affect you. Right. right. So you, you want to do 4 o'clock for your start time. I was correct? thinking 4 and 6 is what we were looking at. Four and six for you. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, like I said, that's why I said it's an individual situation where you have to look at who you're playing, where do those teams have to travel to. Obviously, Paintsville and Betsy Lane are, and Lawrence are in situations where they're having to go to two different venues, so we got to respect those. I just need to be able to tell him what time he has to have officials there. All right, well, I'm going to write in. Shelby Valley, Lawrence County, 4 p.m. right here. Johnson Central 6. I'm waiting to put it over here. Yeah. 
So Shelby Valley Johnson Central, 6 p.m. Four o'clock, six o'clock. So those two are set. Belfry Paints. Well, Belfry is okay with that 2.30 start. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So we got Belfry Paints for the 2.30 starts. So Martin, you want to do a four o'clock start as well. But now where's the Benson Lane? Let's look over here and figure out what. I just, I'll just take pictures. Oh, no. I'll just take pictures. Yeah, we, we, we could flip that. Would you, you all want your girls game? Is, is it would it matter if uh, if um, we said we were going to play the first? Yep. As voted on. All right. So, Chuck, I guess what we got to figure out here. I'm it, there, I'm right now. Huh? Well, I'll come back to you. All right. We'll skip that one. Let's let's move on to the other one. <laughs> all right. So let's go to the Floyd. Central East Ridge. Is there any conflicting? There's no conflicting at all. So that game. Tony, what time? Two thirty at Floyd Central. Okay. <clears throat> all right, Floyd Central East Ridge, two thirty. So what game do we have left to set a time for? Well, the Martin Betsy Lane. But let's go ahead and go to the boys and, and let's get those other. Ones. All right. Who's who's the first game of the boys up top? It's Lawrence and Paintsville. So we got that one needs to be uh, Belfry's fine. So we could go 7:30 there with no problem. If Belfry's, uh, I mean, if Lawrence is good with the 7:30, who's this now? Do you all want to go? You want to go like a 8, 8:30 start? I mean, Saturday night. I mean, we just need to space enough time for everybody to get to where. I don't want to go 8:30 start. Huh? I mean, I would rather not do an 8 or an 8:30 start. I don't want to start no later than 7:30 if possible. Okay, so <laughs> let's just figure out the travel time. I mean, that's the key. Is just make sure you get your band and your, your people from one to the other. So, uh, all right, hey, Hansel's good with seven thirty. They can make. Let's just stay seven thirty. They're good. Seven thirty. Yeah, is that good? I got it's good. All right, right. 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 Can our girls start a little earlier? Yeah, well, who are you playing? <laughs> hey, Greg, where's Greg at? Right back there. Lawrence County asked, just because of travel time, if you could at least do like 3 or 3.30 instead of 4. Is it possible? Uh, well, my people, 4 or 5. Leave it at that and let me get back home and I'll, I'll send a message. Is that permissible? 3.30? Yeah, because i got to talk. Again, if we do that, then we got to move up to a 5.30 tip. Just keep my work. But that won't matter for Johnson. I mean, that, that's... The only thing they're trying to do is give their their people time to get from your place to Lawrence County to, Lawrence County to the boys' game. There has to be some time. It's a, it's a pretty yeah. good drive. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if we yeah. if we yeah. if we yeah. Hey, great job. This is fine with a 5 o'clock or 5 o'clock, whatever you need to do for us, because that'd be the only so what time to go What time are y'all playing in the evening then? 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Yeah, yeah, as long as we can move, we go 3.30 and 5.30. I just got to have... Okay, so 3.30 and 5.30. 3.30 and 5.30. It's a Lawrence County game at their place, 730. 730, yes, our girl for the Johnson Central. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Lawrence County boys is 730 starting on. All right, who's the next game? Uh, Belfry and Betsy Lane. And we said before that, that was at a, that's seven thirty. We said that everybody was good with that. Belfry's good at seven thirty. Belfry's hosting too, right? Yes. Yes. You all good at seven thirty? Uh, I'll commit to later. I can go with the eight. Yeah, I think what we'll do is eight. our girls game is four, and then the Belfry Betsy Lane boys game move it to eight. Okay. Just fine. So four o'clock for Martin and Betsy Lane. You still got a question back there, no? Oh, sorry. Yes, 
Yeah, where are you at? Okay. Floyd Central. Girls. Three inch, Floyd Central, each three inch game? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Four. Four. Yeah. All right, so I want to make sure I got these right. Martin County best lane is four o'clock. Is that right? All right, let's make sure we've got all the game times correct over here on the board. Martin County, hey Chuck, Martin County Betsy Lane at four o'clock. Yeah, girls, four o'clock. Okay. Uh, Betsy Lane, Belfry, boys, uh, eight o'clock. Okay, hold on. And. So Floyd Central East Ridge is also 4 o'clock. All right. All right. Both those are 4 o'clock. Now. Belfry. Betsy Belfry Lane. and Betsy Lane boys. 8, at 8 o'clock. Perfect. All right. 8 o'clock. That leaves McGoffin, Preston, Spurs, and neither of them. That shouldn't matter. So 7. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We already agree. That's what we said we will do. Okay. All right. So let's go through these times. I'm going to read these off, and let's see if... If um, if this works, if if everything is in agreement before we go, I got one last thing to say. I need to see a representative from each school for your board's passes to make sure they get back to them. Okay. All right, so everybody listen. Let's make sure that everybody's good on this. So the Belfry Pencil game, two thirty in girls. Martin County Best Lane, four o'clock. <coughs> Floyd Central East Ridge, 4 o'clock. Shelby Valley, Lawrence County, 3.30. In boys, you've got Lawrence County and Pencil, 7.30. Belfry and Betsy Lane at 8 o'clock. McGoffin and Prestonsburg at 7 o'clock. And Shelby Valley and Johnson Central at 5.30. Sir. So we got everybody. And that's the time we get everybody where we be. Awesome. Everything set in stone now. We're good. Hang on. Hang on. East Ridge said they cannot play at four o'clock, girls. Okay. All right. So what time? Uh, what time? It was going to be two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty start. Okay, that's fine. All right. So the Floyd Central East Ridge is still two thirty. All right, so that was all we had. 2.30 on that game. Next year, we'll find out. All right, so we take a picture of this. Next year, we'll find out. All right. Because I can focus on the final side of the stage. What I can do is probably stand the boys back there. Jeff, you're going to give me my county. Where you at? I need to make a baby. All right, let's go eat. Do you take the...